Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2019 release, Satanic Panic. It is available on the Shutter streaming service when I'm doing this review. And this is one I've heard kind of mixed reviews about. Very initially, I wasn't hearing a lot, but what I was hearing was good. And then after it was more available to people, I started hearing a mixture. I heard some really good. I heard some some people were like, I think it was trash. So I don't I don't, I'm not on either side of the spectrum. I'm, I'm somewhere in between, probably a little more towards the didn't like it side, to be honest. But one thing you need to understand about me in particular is comedy films and horror comedy, because it's comedy in there, I'm usually very, very hard on because it takes a lot for me to like enjoy a comedy to like really make me laugh. Now that said, there were some moments in this that I did definitely enjoy and then did make me laugh. So they're, you know, it's a mixed bag for me personally, but this is one I'm not going to be doing spoilers with because it's a 2019 release and it just hit Shudder recently. Um, so, you know, you can watch this review not having seen it and it's fine. It'll give you an idea if you want to watch it or not, or if you've already seen it, it might mean a little bit more to you hearing some of the things I'm saying. So anyway, it, this was directed by Chelsea Stardust. Um, she's just mainly done a bunch of short films before. This was her first first feature length which directorially she did a decent job you know directing wise it was fine i didn't have any problems it's a shutter exclusive and it's also a fangoria film so if people didn't know fangoria the magazine which was defunct and then came back is doing films now too i think this i think this is the first one i might be wrong someone can fact check me put the info down there but this was written by grady hendrix who did the films mohawk iron fists and kung fu kicks that's the other one. Um, haven't seen either of those, never heard of them. And Ted Georgian, Georgian, uh, who wrote We Are Still Here, Mohawk, and The Disco Exorcist, which sounds amazing. Um, I've heard we are of We Are Still Here. I do need to see it. It's, it's been on my list to see. I've heard decent things about it, um, but haven't seen it yet. Uh, it has Rebecca Romaine in it, who used to be Rebecca Romaine Stamos. That's when people knew her most. Um, she, who was in um, X-Men, obviously. She's a rollerball, femme fatale, stuff like that. So she's uh, she's a known commodity, but she, it's interesting to see her in this because she is by far the most polished actress uh, in the film because she's done so much stuff. And she does a good job, I will say. With the role, it looks like... I don't know if she necessarily had fun with it. I can't tell that, but she took it seriously. She didn't phone it in. She did the job well. Um and she's the best on the screen. There, and speaking to that, there is some acting in this. This is that's pretty poor, to be honest, but not crazy poor. But you know, uh, it also has AJ Bowen in it. He has a kind of smallish part. You might know him from The Signal, The House of the Devil, Hatchet Two, A Horrible Way to Die, and You're Next. Some good films in that list. Um, ones I should probably review, by the way. And Jordan Ladd is in it, uh, who is in Cabin Fever, Club Dread, and Death Proof. Also, good films right there that I should probably review. So anyway, let's talk, without spoilers, about the film. The acting in the very beginning makes me think this is a comedy because it's not good acting. So that's one of the things to kind of say is since the acting's not that good, um, it, it, it's more forgivable if it's in a, a comedy or in this instance a horror comedy. It's more fine. Um, so there, there's more leeway to have not great actors if, if you're going for a comedic aspect. Going into the film, I didn't know what I was going to be getting. I didn't know if it was going to be serious or it was going to be comedic. So they do give you a good idea early on that it is going to be comedic. But part of the problem with that is it doesn't maintain the amount of comedy that I personally feel I need to enjoy a horror comedy. It was more on the horror side than the comedy side. There was such few comedy that I actually found funny in it that I thought they should probably just played it straight just done a straight film with, with like a small comedic moment here or there because you can do that properly. Um, I'm watching this film. It reminded me a little bit of like Ready or Not and that was much better. I really liked the way that was executed and that one had comedy to it, but it was also very serious. So if they would have taken more of a tone like that, I think it would have worked really well for this film. It's just the mix of serious and not serious just didn't work for me at all. Uh, I hate the song they repeatedly use in the beginning. It's unbelievably annoying. Overall, the music is not good in this, and a lot of it's very over the top. This is a f most of the time when I'm watching films, 
and, and the music's happening, I'm either like, oh, this is really good, or it doesn't bother me. This one, it bothered me. The music in this is terrible. They did a bad job picking the music, and like I said, it's over the top. It's just, and the, the, the song they keep repeating in the beginning, unbelievably annoying, because it's bad, and they keep using it. It's like, stop. Restraint, please. Restraint. Uh, there's an interesting feeling of a woman in a crude man's world that just comes off as uncomfortable and odd, but funny to the audience because the audience is kind of seeing both sides. It's from a female's perspective. Um, well, I mean, it's it's the um, female's perspective from the standpoint of it, uh, the main character is a female, and there are a lot of female characters in it. So you see from her standpoint, uh, she's kind of in a male's world, and it's kind of uncomfortable for her. For her. You feel that. And that's a cool aspect to it. I did like that aspect of it. But you also see the other side where these guys are just, you know, guys being guys and being funny. And so you laugh with some of the stuff that's going on. So your experience as an audience member is actually a little bit different than what the main character's experience is. You're getting a piece of each of them and you understand each side. So I like how that played out in the beginning. And there were some decent-ish laughs in the beginning. It's got to feel like it's a made-for-TV movie. It definitely feels like a made-for-TV movie. Um, you know, some sometimes that's fine, sometimes it's not fine. For me, I was kind of eh about it. Like, it didn't matter to me that much, but I just wanted to let everyone know it felt like a made-for-TV movie. The main character does something very bold early on that does not make sense for the actual, actual character, does not make sense for anyone in that situation. It was a one of these moments of it happens because it's in the script, and it doesn't really jive so some people might know what i mean it's very early on it's kind of what touches everything off basically so but stuff leading up to that was believable and then i was like yeah there's a scene in the beginning that's supposed to be funny but it goes too long and starts feeling desperate for laughs and this actually happens again at the end of the film it's kind of it's kind of like it was intentional that there would be a not funny moment that they just keep drawing out and being like, wait, quick, wait, but are you laughing now? But what if we keep doing it? Are you laughing now? But what about now? No, stop. You do it real quick. If people laugh at it, they laugh at it. Stop trying to beat it to death because people are not going to laugh at it. So they did that in the beginning, and then they do it, do it again. It's not the same situation, but they do it again at the end. And it's like, ugh, it's cringy. It's so cringy, those two moments. And I was just like, ugh. And that turned me off. There's a real class warfare theme here, which I did like. There's some interesting themes in this. Class warfare is one of the biggest ones. You'll see that coming. It, it's set up very, very early. They're kind of like showing very nice large houses with perfectly manicured lawns. And then they go to the main character who's not doing well monetarily and kind of their life and how they're living. And it's clearly a class warfare type thing. It's, you know, what the rich do or think they can do to anyone because they have money. And that's obviously something that actually plays out in real life in many, many ways. So I like that aspect of it, that they had that kind of underlying theme. There's also a generational warfare theme. Millennial term is used quite a few times, which is a very charged term. So it does feel kind of millennial versus boomer situation, uh, where the younger generation is chided at every turn for not taking control of their own life situations, when it's controlled by the older generations, there's literally a point in this made where the older generations are like, well, if you would just do this and do this and take control of your life, everything would be fine, you millennials. And they're, the millennials are like, look at the situation we're in. We can't control anything. You're controlling it, which has kind of been this long-term issue between millennial and, and boomer situation of, you know, I'm basically, you know. I'm technically, I believe, millennial, but I'm at the very end. I'm I was born in 1981, so it's like right there. So I don't, I don't like to be a part of any group, honestly. So I don't consider myself a part of any generational group. That's just how I am. Just like I'm not a part of any political group either. I'm independent. I've always been that way. I hate being a part of these groups. Uh, I just, I won't do it. So anyway, but um. Yeah, so I it was interesting to see that them kind of doing their own little play of, you know, this is what the older generation thinks, this is what the younger generation thinks. So it played all right. 
There's a pretty funny moment with Jerry O'Connell. He his character fails horribly at something, and it produces very a, a very funny moment. One of my favorite moments of the film. Um, Jerry O'Connell did fine in it. I was fine with him. Uh, the gore and practical effects in this are actually pretty fun. They did a really good job. That that's the biggest strength in my opinion are the gore and practical effects. That's the most important thing about this. If you just want to see some good gore and practical effects and have a little bit of fun, you can watch this film. I'm that that'd be fine. When did hiking your pants way the hell up become a thing again? Did I miss it? Like I miss these things all the time because you know I'm almost forty years old. I I'm not keeping up on trends for fashion or anything like that. I've never been fashionable, really, clothing wise. So uh, when I was watching this movie and the main character has her pants hiked way way up. I was like, is this a thing now? Like, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Is this a thing? Like, hiking your pants way the hell up? That Like, that's a thing again? I don't know. I just feel like these uh, fashion trends just keep recycling. You know, like the pedal pushers and the culottes and bell bottoms even for a while. They just called them flared pants. You know, all these things. They just keep coming back. They cycle. And they're always the same thing. Fashion industry, man. There's a lot of focus in this on physical violation in different ways and scenarios. So um, it fits with the overall type of film it is. And um, I mean, if you've seen the trailer, you basically know this film does not at all hide what it's supposed to be, which I kind of thought they should have in a way. It would have been more fun for me if you don't really fully know what you're getting into to start it out. Like something like um, House of the Devil, which... You know, I already talked, you know, A.J. Bowen was in. But with the House of the Devil, like, you don't know what you're actually getting into. You have some ideas, but you don't fully know. With this film, you know. Like, you basically know. So, I think I think they should have held some, some information back. And the fact that the title is Satanic Panic. I mean, it's a cool title, but, you know, I don't know. I would have liked a little more, uh, a little less information going into the film. The movie makes sat Satanism look like way too much work. Uh, that's what that's the thing I took away from this film is that you know you always have these types of films where there's like satanic worship or there's like witch covens or there's like you know people trying to summon demons or like all this stuff. And I just look at it and I'm like, it's so much work. Like, is this worth it? And, and particularly watching this movie, like how much these people go through and what they have to do and everything, I was just like is this really worth it for them? Like, it seems like way too much work for what? But, you know, that's just kind of a funny thing that occurred to me while I was watching it. Uh, there's a character that shows up at the end of this that is just stupidly awful. A terribly written character, a terribly acted character, a dumb idea for the story, in my opinion. And there's also a callback from the beginning that induced for me a gigantic eye roll. The end is not not good. The end is very bad, in my opinion. Uh, they need to take some more passes at the script. And like I was saying, there need to be more actual comedy to it. But like I said, there are some good comedic moments to it. There are some fun moments. The gore and the practical effects are good. So there's good here, but there's a lot of not good here. There's a lot of misses. So, you know. And then the last thing I just wanted to say is, it's this is the, the last note I made. It's hard to do a horror comedy well. This movie proves that it's more absurd than it is funny. And that's kind of the thing. Is It's hard. You have to walk this line when you're doing comedy, especially in horror, of just absurdity. And if it's going to be just absurdity, it has to be like crazy fun absurdity. Like, I don't know, some of like the Japanese splatter gore f films, like uh, Tokyo Gore Police or meatball machine or you know stuff like that like it needs to be absurd to the point where it's just a fun time and it's over the top and it's nuts this one it's it's trying to be comedy but it goes too far into the absurd and it feels confused in that aspect so i just don't feel like it works that well uh there's something good there somewhere but it you know anyway that's my feeling on it so out of five stars with uh, half stars in play i'm gonna give this a two star rating I'm not going to go too much further. I thought about the one and a half, but then I was like, nah, that's too much. Uh, that's too harsh. So the two star, I think, is appropriate. So based off this review and whatever else you've heard, if you've seen the trailer and, and you really want to check it out, it's 
I think it's fine to check it out once. I don't think this is going to be a film that many people feel a desire to watch more than once, to be honest. But anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. Do me a quick favor, though. Hit this, that subscribe if you're not already subscribed. The amount of views I get on my videos comes from like 75% non-subscribed people. So if I could get some more subscribers, that would help out. Um, so subscribe. If you're already subscribed, do a thumbs up to let me know you're still watching and encouraging me. Comments down there. Definitely want to hear about your thoughts on Satanic Panic, especially people who don't agree with me because I'm always interested in what the other side of the coin is. You know, these are just my opinions. They're personal, so everyone has those. But thanks again for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.